Are you ready for change? Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. You're listening to Mr. Change Agent Podcast with your host, Ron Ovid, author, teacher, recovery coach, pastoral counselor, and creator of emotional relearning. We've been having a series here on these podcasts uh, talking about emotional health. And uh, just uh, last time we talked about the physicality, the physical health, and things that we need to do to uh, help along with this emotional resilience that we need. And uh, that was a fascinating topic. And today we're going to look at something a little different here, Ron. I know you're trained in both ministry and psychology and perhaps one of the best experts on the integration of Christianity and psychology around. Do you think there's a need for the spiritual to be involved in good mental health? Uh, That's a great question, and and so that's what we want to talk about today. I'd say yes and no. I mean, uh, I know a lot of people who are not spiritual uh, in a Christian sense of the word and that are emotionally sound. I mean, you know, for the most part. I mean, (laughs) there's no perfect people, so I'm sure that even uh, those of us that think that, uh, you know, we're okay, (laughs) there's room and improvement. So I I believe the spiritual is very important. Now, let me qualify my area of spirituality, and that's Christianity. I I would recommend that to anybody. You know, it's been around uh, for a long, long time. It has a whole doctrine in the, you know, the Bible, scriptures that you can be reading. There's plenty of churches you can go to, lots of books. I mean, so Christianity is a great place to start your quest for spirituality. And and so I think, yes, definitely a relationship with God uh, can make all the difference in the world, in our emotional state. For example, you may have had childhood trauma. And you may have had a, a struggling with a self-image and, and feeling loved. So where do you go? How do you create that hook? Uh, can you go back to the caregivers, perhaps? Well, maybe, maybe not. You can forgive. Maybe it's toxic relationship. But the beauty of Christianity is that you can go to a father who is a loving father. You can go to a God who loves you. Now, some people would say that's a crutch. I would say, no, that's a reality. It's a reality, and, you know, we come to him. The Holy Spirit is the, called the Comforter, and so we come to him. And so God has a, the ability to help us uh, overcome a lot of the emotional issues. We have faith, hope, and love, those three, right, can really help us. The, uh, Paul writes about the uh, spiritual fruit in our lives And so we can have this spiritual fruit of love and joy, peace, uh, patience, kindness, gentleness, uh, faithfulness, and self-control. And those things are excellent. In fact, that's what we call my course, uh, Emotional Resilience, Living with the Fruit of the Spirit. And so, yes, I'd have to say, yes, it, it, it can be very, very, very integral to having good, solid emotional health. Well, I know in the past and various times you've talked about spiritual discipline, uh, and you use that term. What what do you mean by that, and how does it fit into this whole emotional health? Well, the term comes from the fact of of, uh, spiritual. Okay, what do we do spiritually to keep spiritually alive, and do we make it a discipline? You know, are we disciplined to do it every day? Exercise should become a discipline, right? It's not something you do once in a while. Uh, when we talked about healthy eating in the, in the podcast earlier, uh, that needs to become a discipline. We need to do it uh, every day. You know, we need to do the right things. It becomes a healthy habit. And so disciplines are healthy habits. And since we're Mr. Change Agent here and we talk about habits, you know, we need to put on healthy habits. And taking care of ourselves spiritually, building that relationship with God is something that we should do, something that uh, feeds us, something that is uh, important to us. And so there's different ways of of doing it. There's exercises that we can do uh, to help us build our faith. Uh, One would be scripture reading. You know, when I wrote the book, Five Signs of a Healthy Christian, and, and, you know, uh, the first one was, uh, one of the first signs I wrote about was loving Jesus. The second was loving the Word. And when I was researching that, I was amazed to find like 68% of those that go to church never read the Bible. 
Uh, you can hear the Bible in some of the sermons. Uh, you can have a daily devotional, maybe, or you can hear a sermon on a radio. But that's not the same thing as spending a, a quiet time with God, musing, listening to the Word, uh, reading it, understanding it, not just for head knowledge, although that's important. I think it's important that we interpret Scripture correctly, but also for the heart knowledge. Uh, I, I know that I know that I know. So scripture reading is one of them. Another is praying. Now, you'd be amazed at how many people don't really pray. I mean, they pray when they're really desperate, you know, and I get that. I, I don't fault anyone for praying when things are going bad. I mean, that we should. But prayer should be part of our everyday discipline. Uh, you know, I go through a whole routine where I'm praying for my family and my extended family, my friends, other things, and, and asking God, you know, beseeching on their behalf. I pray for my own needs. I thank, have some time to thank God and praise Him for what He's doing, you know, gratitude. And, and then I also have time to listen. Praying isn't just a one-way street. It's listening as well. A lot of times when I do my walk, I pray. I like to pray and walk, you know. Uh, even when I jogged, you know, for uh, four or five miles a day, I would pray, you know. So, there's, you know, you can be praying at different times of the day, but it's just communion with God. Some people take a notebook, which is a great exercise. So they write down what they want to talk about and bring it to God, and then they listen. When's the last time, perhaps, you ask God, Lord, do you really love me? And then you wait. You know, Lord, you know, I feel sad today. Is there anything you want to share with me? And you wait. And, and you write down some things. And God, God wants to interact with us. So prayer is another one that's very important. Well, we talk about discipline. And, and I like that, Ron. Uh, Paul talks about it when he addresses the uh, uniform of the Roman soldier, the armor of God, as we say. And the interesting thing is when he talks about that in Ephesians, the tenses there, it's basically saying, look, soldier, <laughs> pick it up, put on the uniform, and keep it on. Hmm. And there's a discipline involved. And if you read those, I, you know, I imagine sometimes I think of him sitting in prison there, you mm -hmm. know, and outside the garrison. He's in a garrison, you know, and, and all these guys are out there. The clanging of these wooden sticks, they used uh, swords, wooden swords to drill, and they drilled every day. It's like he probably went, don't you know that? tortoise movement by now you know it's like mm -hmm. every day they're practicing and that's why they won so many battles they were disciplined beyond mm -hmm. belief and it, it, it's not surprising that the holy spirit said paul look you've got time on your hands let's write about this and mm -hmm. and just wrote about the discipline that we need and the thing is it's every day you put it on you keep sure. it on it's a lifestyle it, it is but you know there's something else too ron uh, it's an interesting topic what it certainly exists in the New Testament. What about the demonic? Well, <laughs> well, that's a good one. I think we've got everyone's attention now. So, uh, well, you know, here again, even non-spiritual uh, people wonder about demonic, right? I mean, horror movies are, you know, all the rage, and magic and all kinds of things are all the rage. And so there is that curiosity there's part of us that want uh, for spirituality and want to are interested in both the force of good and evil. It's a theme throughout literature and movies and that. Uh, the demonic is real. I mean, you know, uh, there is a good and evil, and, and the evil is personified in, in Satan and the devil, and, and he has uh, legions of, of uh, demons that help him. And, and it's easy to focus on that. You know, it's easy to become frightened even of that. And I know uh, being the person that I was, you know, I had a lot of anxiety in that, that uh, I had a lot of fear over that. And I'll never forget, I was running Youth for Christ in Lyme, Ohio, and uh, this one woman uh, came and she said, oh, you've got to listen to these tapes. Can we do it at our Bible study? It's all about, you know, o overcoming the demonic and all this stuff. So I said, okay. So... Uh, what I didn't know is it was a two-part series. Uh, the first part was this horrific testimony, how this guy just got beat up one side down there, all these horror stories. I mean, it was, it was just graphic and, and scared, you know, scared you to death. 
and then it ended. Well, there was part two apparently where victory came, but I never seen the woman again. <laughs> <laughs> so there, I had to pick up the pieces for the next meeting. She never came back. And I'll tell you what, it, you know, all of a sudden you're focused on a fear. And I'll never forget uh, when I first heard of Neil Anderson, Dr. Neil Anderson. And he wrote this, uh, you know, The Bondage Breaker and, and other books. And so I picked up these books and started reading it, and it was phenomenal. There was so much hope here. And he has this simple little book, I think it's like $5 on Amazon, called Steps to Freedom in Christ. I'll repeat that again. Steps to Freedom in Christ. And it's by Neil Anderson. And I recommend that to anyone. In there are prayers that you can do. And here's what Neil Anderson says in a nutshell. The demonic in that, when we come against the demonic, it's a truth encounter. Satan is a deceiver. He is a liar. And the things that we believe about ourselves that are lies, the things, you know, he uses those things. And so we come to uh, the spiritual battle not to shout them out or have a shouting match, you know, or, hey, strength this and, you know, Jesus can beat you up kind of thing. Instead, it's a truth encounter. Here's what the Word of God says. I choose to believe that. I choose to refuse to believe the lies. And, and you, you'll see that the majority of the time, when we're fearing it, they're lies that we're believing. And so my recommendation for anyone that's more interested in that is pick up Neil Anderson's book, The Bondage Breaker or Steps to Freedom in Christ, the little prayer booklet, and uh, you'll be blessed. And remember, it's a truth encounter. Which goes into the next one, the last thing I want to talk about in our spiritual disciplines. And there's plenty of disciplines. I mean, there's all kinds of them, but I wanted to hit on a couple of the main ones. And the other is meditation. Um, you know, meditating on the Word, not just reading it. It's not just head knowledge. Now, it's important to read it. I mean, you want to get a general idea of what the Scriptures are saying, but you also want to know what's a saying to you. And so I have what I call integrated medication where I'm using both the heart and the brain. It's interesting. We have brain cells in our guts and around our heart, and they communicate with the brain. And what I've found is that I can make this shift uh, for me, I have some hang-ups sometimes thinking of, of, of love. And we'll get into that in another podcast, receiving love. But my son has his dog, Rocco, and, and every once in a while I get the dog sit, right? And, and I get along with Rocco. And, and when he sees me, he comes up and he stands upright and puts his paws right on my chest. And I just kind of, you know, put my hands and pet him, you know, on the side of his head and everything. And it brings a smile to my face. And when I think of that picture, all of a sudden I shift from my brain and I feel, feel it right in my heart. I can feel this warmth, this thing. And, and people can do that, whether it's a grandma you think of, some, some sort of appreciation that someone gave you, a compliment, someone that you love deeply. When you all of a sudden focus on them, you can feel the shift. And that's the heart. And we want to get that way where we're thinking about God that way, where it shifts from our brain to our heart. And we, we meditate on him from this warmth, if you will, this, this feeling, this knowing that I'm there with him, that I'm greatly loved. And so we read it. Then we read it for comprehension. Then introspection. What's it saying to me? What's this scripture saying to me? And then contemplation. That's where you let in the divine, right? You receive it from the Lord. Lord, what are you saying to me? What do you want to say through this? And we reflect on it. And then we end by visualizing it. We visualize God there. We visualize the scripture being true for us. We see ourselves doing it or being the participant in it or the receiver of it. And we see it and we sense it. And so meditation's important. And so, you know, spiritual disciplines, I encourage anyone here, if you want to be emotionally healthy, get spiritually healthy. And, and, and let the spiritual life continue to bless your emotional life. Some good words, Ron. We just thank you so much for sharing those with us and the correlation between the Word of God, a spiritual life, and mental health. It's, it's definitely there. The lines are drawn. And uh, God would have us be complete. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
some real good words, and I trust you heard them. I trust you'll listen to this again, that you'll join us in these podcasts, that you'll like them, that you'll subscribe to this podcast series. And in fact, you'll go to YouTube and you'll find many of these same podcasts there, along with many videos. And that's easy to find. You go to YouTube, you type in Mr. Change Agent, and the logo will come up. You hit that, and there's an entire library of things that you can look. And you like that channel, you tell others about it. Word of mouth is very important. And uh, if you have someone that's struggling, someone that needs some help, by all means, please share this information with them. Turn them on to the um, podcasts here and on to the Mr. Change Agent YouTube channel. So thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to having another podcast soon with Mr. Change Agent.